Some of our previous guests, like Rob Locasio of Live Person, kind of knew that they always wanted to be entrepreneurs and start their own companies from a very young age. You were actually looking more towards another field, broadcasting, and it was sports <laughs> broadcasting specifically, right? That is right. I grew up in Washington, D.C., an avid Redskin fan in the 80s, and so it was nothing but joy. But you didn't go into sports broadcasting. Instead, you went into finance. How did that come about? So uh, I was a proud and am a proud Wolverine and went there both because of the great academics, but also the sports. I wrote for the Michigan Daily. And then when I went home to, I'm from Washington, D.C. or the suburbs, I worked at a radio station. Then I worked at a TV station. And while logging baseball tapes, I also worked on the presidential campaign in 92 and the economics packages and really started to understand um, the power of economics and politics and how the two connected and became really interested in business and finance. When and how did you first become aware of Clear the Company and the fact that it was something that you might be able to, to dive into? The thing that we were really passionate about was the ability for biometrics to change the way people live, work, and travel. They had a great idea. Steve Brill had a great idea in public-private partnership uh, with the Department of Homeland Security and changing the way people travel. It had to get better in a post-9-11 environment mm -hmm. and had to get safer. Biometrics and Clear were part of that solution. What were your first steps after you acquired the company? Yeah, I think a really important piece of business that I learned in asset management and carried over to Clear and really drive through our entire organization is the power of relationships that mm. build trust. Mm -hmm. And so, in fact, when we were looking at buying Clear, we went and we met with folks in Washington, in government, at airports, at airlines, to better understand their perspective and their experiences, and to really go out and share the story of what our vision was uh, of building a secure identity platform that today was in travel, but tomorrow would be the de facto platform for so many different industries, changing the way people live, work, and travel. So we just kept going and sharing our vision. It was really building trust with stakeholders, and we were doing something new. Still, biometrics weren't mainstream. Yeah. So let's talk about travel and the airport, because before we get into um, the investors like Delta, I, I just want to get your read on what you're seeing right now, because you're in a really unique position, right? You have a read on what travel demand looks like, and it's been up, it's been down. We see people uh, taking longer trips. At Thanksgiving, they started leaving a week before they would normally leave. They are staying for uh, almost two times as long. They are in this world of digital nomads and hybrid work. We at Clear have worked from anywhere August. People are planning where they're going to work from. Mm -hmm. uh, we are back in the office, but there are definitely people who, as opposed to going away for three days for MLK, went away for four or five. So you can amortize you know, your airplane ticket over a longer stay. Business travel once upon a time meant going somewhere, flying 14 hours for a I don't know, a three hour meeting and then coming back, which right. is crazy now when you think about it. But now it could mean relocating somewhere for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Or it could mean in a remote or hybrid work environment that you're someone who used to not travel and you were in New York, but now you're in Cleveland and yeah. you have to come back six times a year. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a really extraordinary time and people need to redefine what it means to be a business traveler, a leisure traveler, as opposed to just a traveler. We think as you look over the next decade, travel is going to be much more frictionless, leverage much more innovation. If you look outside of travel, whether it be food delivery or ride share, it's changed dramatically, really through the power of technology enabling it. Mm -hmm. And so we see the same thing in travel. You know, identity is foundational. When you think of all the times that you are taking out the cards in your wallet or, or trying to show your attributes, insights, loyalty, fandom, employee, we think that there's enormous opportunities when you look at Clear's mission to make experiences safer and easier, frictionless and trusted. I, I believe in experiential learning. So whether it be Apple, whether it be going from hailing a cab to ordering a ride share, whether it be my mom would have never gotten groceries delivered to her house, but did during COVID. And once she experienced that, you really start thinking about productivity in a different way. And why was I doing this before? You get your time back and spend more time with your family and what you love doing and really changing the customer and partner experience.